Hey everybody, this is a piece by Ross Wolf titled Dialectics and Difference Against the Quote Decolonial Turn, end quote. <laughs> the decade or so since the financial crisis of 2008 has seen a resurgence of interest in what 19th century thinkers would have called the quote social question, end quote backpedaling somewhat from the, quote, cultural turn, end quote, of previous decades. Yet despite a series of recent skirmishes against the post-communist geopolitical order, from the Greek uprising in December 2008 to the London riots, Arab Spring, and the Spanish indignados of 2011, up to the Polish women's strikes in October 2016, old habits die hard. Forgive me. Few self-styled radicals who came of age during the 90s and aughts, especially those who attended universities, want to see the discourses of, quote, difference, end quote, on which they were weaned suddenly abandoned wholesale. Alongside an ascent and budding movements, then, one witnesses the recrudescence of concepts and strategies which ought to have been superseded by events themselves. Nowhere is this more evident than in the almost endless balkanization of identity formations. Each lays claim to a particular set of unrelatable, quote, lived experiences, end quote, as if hell-bent on proving the old psychoanalytic trope of Narcissmus der kleinen Differenzen, narcissism of small differences, quote, Decolonial end quote, criticism is an example of just this sort of vogue academic approach, which can still which can be grafted onto pre existing disciplines and practices with relative ease. Still further, in so doing, it offers the semblance of radicalism, because it appears to challenge the tacit erasures and hidden presuppositions of prior revolutionary perspectives. In reality, however, it simply transposes dependency theory in the realm of economics onto that of epistemology. Third worldism, based on the model proposed by the French demographer Alfred Salvi in 1952, has been supplanted by talk of the global south, based on the line proposed by the former West German chancellor Willy Brandt in 1983. But the substance remains the same. Mainly, it consists in diagnosing the allegedly Eurocentric prejudices of various bodies of knowledge, known to their very excuse me, down to their very methodologies, and then enjoining individuals to decolonize their minds. Quote, kill the cop in your head, end quote, is seemingly replaced by quote, kill the pilgrim in your head, end quote. Recently, this procedure has even sought to, quote, decolonize, end quote, dialectical thought, although in the name of its decolonization. Excuse me. Recently, this procedure has even sought to, quote, colonize, end quote, dialectical thought, although in the name of dialectical thoughts, decolonization. Here it becomes worthwhile to review one of the more elaborate efforts to subsume dialectics under difference. Irreconcilable differences. Quote, Ours is a newly dialectical age, end quote, announces George Sicariello Meyer, or Meyer, on the outset of his book, at the outset of his book, Decolonizing Dialectics, 2017. By this he means, quote, the much-touted teleological, quote, end of history, end quote, has collapsed, like the myth it always was, into fragmentation, disunities, and dynamic oppositions. I think this Sicariello Mar guy is the guy who is, like, has got, like, in trouble for the... All I want for white Christmas. All I want for Christmas is white genocide post on TikTok or something like that. I, mean, I don't know if he got fired from an academic post or what, but I think this is the guy. No, don't. I'm not sure about that. 
He immediately calls attention to the contentious character of the term, since many who heralded this historical denouement a quarter century ago did so on the basis of arguments invoking the dialectic. Quote, for too long, end quote, Sicariello Mar continues, quote, dialectics has not served to denote the moments of combative division that give its name, but instead the opposite, a harmonious closure, end quote. Against this conservative conception, he hopes to restore its critical revolutionary balance. The book's title might give rise to some confusion. Decolonizing dialectics does not aim to deploy dialectical mytho methodology in ongoing projects of decolonization. Indeed, colonialism in the narrow sense of direct territorial occupation and administration scarcely exists today, having been replaced by more indirect, quote, colonialism by remote control, end quote. Rather, Sicariello, Mar, aims to, quote, decolonize the methodology itself, i.e. remove the accidental features that mark its geographic origins and add any essentials it may be lacking. Whereas the two classics, excuse me, the two classic forms of dialectic, idealist and materialist alike, proceed by means of internal contradictions and move towards determinate ends. Quote, Decolonizing dialectics underscores how the Hegelian and Marxian conceptions of history emerge from a particular location, Europe, and assume dialectical resolutions specific to it. Zitlikait, through civil society for Hegel, the abolition of class by proletarian revolution for Marx, end quote. Sicariello's, Sicariello Mars, latest re release thus contributes to a growing body of literature within the academy, the gist of which is to challenge established disciplines and schools of thought by questioning their provenance and scope of applicability, pioneered by figures such as Walter Mignolo, Nelson Maldonado Torres, Ramon <coughs> Gros Fuguel, the approach cultivated in this literature has been dubbed, quote, decolonial, end quote, an admittedly torturous locution. Over the past year or so, a number of works have appeared in a similar vein. Amy Allen, author of The End of po Progress, 2016, asserts that, quote, critical theory stands in need of decolonization insofar as the strategy for grounding normativity relies on the notion of historical progress, end quote. She implores critical theorists to adopt a stance of, quote, epistemic humility, end quote, as well as a, quote, genuine openness to subaltern others, end quote. Gennaro, or... Inaro, I don't know if you pronounce the G in this name, I'm not sure, but I'm going to assume you do. Gennaro Aschione, excuse me, Gennaro Aschione, A-S-C-I-O-N-E, argues in Unthinking Modernity from 2016 that Marxists see modern society as too self-enclosed, too sealed off from outside forces. Quote, Marx's notion of incorporation, bracket, into global capitalism, end bracket, conceals the colonial gaze and neutralizes the colonial difference by obscuring non-Western, non-capitalist agency, end quote. Everything becomes reducible to, quote, bracket, capitals, end bracket, own inner contradictions, end quote. Like Allen and Askione, Sicariello, Mar believes that existing modes of radical politics are still too reliant on narratives of linear progress and not yet open enough to marginalize perspectives, in contrast to a traditional dialectic that, quote, moves inexorably and deterministically in keeping with its own internal oppositions, end quote. 
he explains, quote, a decolonial dialectic recognizes both the historic source of that motion outside Europe in the colonies, as well as the brutal reality that for colonial subjects, history often seems to move backward rather than forward, if it moves at all, end quote. Unlike Alan Oskion and Oskion, however, Sicariello Mar is more interested in, quote, dialectics understood as a practice, end quote, than in theoretical matters such as normativity or the empirical validity of social science. Furthermore, he regards recent high-profile efforts to relate dialectical thought to non-European revolutionary movements as flawed. <coughs> Susan Buckmorse's Hegel, Haiti, and Universal History, published in 2009, and Timothy Brennan's Borrowed Light, Vico, Hegel, and the Colonies, published in 2014, each, quote, remain conspicuously Eurocentric, end quote. Sicariello Mars insistence, excuse me, insists that, quote, a decolonized and decolonizing dialectics construed as radical practice and orientation towards struggle, predates, exceeds, and exists independently of even Hegel's formulations in the self-assertion of colonized and enslaved peoples, end quote. Yet, in attempting to alter the dialectical method, decolonizing dialectics abandons several of its crucial premises, namely the categories of totality, reciprocal mediation, and imminent critique, the absence of which ought to cast doubt on Sicariello's Mars, <laughs> Sicariello Mars entire enterprise. I just realized I might be pronouncing this guy's name. Maybe the hell's are not, or like Y sounds, but forgive me. His argument is pieced together from readings of texts by George Sorel, Franz Fanon, and Enrique Dussel. Who, two of whom disavow the concept of dialectics as such, and none of whose views square neatly with their counterparts. This difficulty is acknowledged more than once by Sicariello Mar, which suggests he is at least aware of the implausibility, if not outright impossibility, of his thesis. Because built-in social antagonisms cannot function for him as the source of, quote, a self-starting and automatic movement, end quote. The impetus must come from without. Progress hinges here on, quote, an appeal to exteriority, and a, quote, decolonial difference, end quote, that exceeds an internally dialectical relation, end quote, which allows, quote, the antagonistic projection of militant identities to up jumpstart historical motion, end quote. Revolutionary subjectivity can only be revived by, quote, drawing together multiple dialectics whose central identities, class, race, nation, and people, are neither distinguished categorically from nor reduced to one another, end quote. <laughs> Just how far this has drifted from the materialist dialectic will be shown by the following. Well, Sicariello Mar nowhere claims to be a Marxist, it is nevertheless instructive to set his retrofitted radicalism side by side with the universality of Marx. Quote, Today, the notion there is any meaningful commonality based on human beings as a species is under a cloud, even if its opponents rarely state their case in so many words, end quote. Lauren Goldner explains. Quote, For them... Such ideas, for instance, the idea that Western Europe from the Renaissance onward was a revolutionary social formation unique in history, or that there is any meaning to the idea of progress, or that there exist criteria by which one can judge the humanity or inhumanity of different, quote, cultures, are, quote, white 
quote, male, quote, Eurocentric constructs designed to deny women, peoples of color, and gays the, quote, difference, end quote, of their, quote, identity, end quote, end quote. Lauren Goldner. Needless to say, the project of decolonizing dialectics is fundamentally at odds with that of revolutionary Marxism. Sicariello Mar is cognizant of this fact, however, and admits as much several times throughout the book. Ultimately, this has to do with the aforementioned, quote, colonial difference, end quote, which Maldonado Torres classifies as a, quote, sub-ontological difference, end quote, in an article cited by Sicariello Mar. Here, there are obvious echoes of Martin Heidegger, whose exploration of so-called, quote, ontological difference, end quote, in Being in Time, published in 1927, paved the way for both the, quote, trans-ontological difference, end quote, of Emmanuel Levinas's ethics, as well as Jacques Derrida's deconstructive, quote, difference, end quote. The former was extremely influential, influential for Dussel, and hence, by extension, for Sicariello Mar, insofar as he takes his cues from the Argentine. Decolo decolonizing dialectics also shares clear methodological affinities with the latter. Quote, I trail slightly closer to deconstruction than the dialectic, end quote, he writes, quote, in the degree to which contingency, indeterminacy, and an open hostility to, to, to totality imbues the multiple and local dialectics of the thinkers dealt with in this book, end quote. But Heideggerian difference, colonial or otherwise, cannot coexist with the Hegelian dialectic, Marxist or otherwise. Some scholars consider the pivotal shift in philosophy over the last century to have been the displacement of one by the other. Again, Goldner summarizes this shift rather well. Quote, like Foucault after him, Heidegger aimed his arrows directly at dialectical thought, a reason that tends to absorb the other into itself, that understands all, quote, otherness, end quote, as alienation, or, as in Marx's motto, quote, nothing human is alien to me, end quote. Against this kind of rationality, Heidegger tried to erect a wall of difference, difference that was not dialectically mediated or superseded by any historical process, but just different, the same irreducible anti-dialectical difference Darida would later call difference, end quote. Lauren Goldner. It is no accident that, quote, incommensurability, end quote, appears as often as it does in Sicariello Mars' brief study, nor is it purely adventitious that he would so applaud Sorel for, quote, pressing class difference to the very breaking point, end quote, i.e., quote, to the point where an internal class relation threatens to become an external non-relation, end quote. For Sorel, Sicariello Mar maintains, quote, the relation between the classes is one of incommensurability and irreconcilability bordering on non-relation, end quote. The literary critic Frederick Jameson, whose work provides occasional guidance for Sicariello Mar, calmly observes that, quote, the concept of the incommensurable is at the very heart of contemporary philosophies of difference, and so one needs to know whether the dialectic is not powerful enough to transform this affirmation of, quote, radical difference into a new form of relationship, end quote. Frederick Jameson. One might note in passing that the real historical basis for the commensurability of incommensurable items, and thus for dialectic itself, is precisely abstract labor as the measure of value under capital. Goldner is right to suspect, at any rate, that, quote, behind their all-too-facile attacks on, quote, master narratives and bureaucracy, 
theoreticians of difference were after the real game, the unitary working class, quote, subject, end quote, end quote. This is certainly the case with Sicariello Mar, who contends that, quote, in order to overcome capitalism, we must call into question the imminent perfection of the European proletariat as revolutionary subject, end quote. Moreover, those who continue to defend the classical Marxist doctrine that the proletariat is, quote, the only decisive revolutionary class in society, end quote, are either convicted of class centrism, Eurocentrism, or both. Quote, any insistence on the centrality of class as the universal political identity motivating human progress elevates a particular feature of European development to the status of world historic universal, end quote, writes Sicaria Lomar, quote, thus imprisoning the racialized and colonized of the world within a linear developmentalism which obliges them to catch up with Europe, end quote. Sorel is summoned as an expert witness in C. Cariello Mar's case against the central role assigned to the proletariat by Marxism. Quote, Instead of a progressive clarification of class oppositions through the unbridled logic of capital and an unfolding dialectic leading to inevitable proletarian victory, Sorel saw only blockage and stasis, a frozen dialectic, end quote. Pivoting to a discussion of Fanon's Wretched of the Earth, published in 1961, Sicariello Mar contends, quote, even dialectics lacks traction in this peculiarly barren space, bracket, in Europe, end bracket, as Sorel has shown, while the proletariat could have smashed the narcissistic dialogue of European thought, it refused to step forward and instead demanded inclusion in a totalizing Hegelianism of the spirit. Yet European equilibrium was only possible at the expense of a substantial outside beyond its borders, end quote. Fanon is repeatedly quoted in order to say that workers are, quote, pampered, end quote. Of course, the search for a revolutionary subject to replace the old industrial proletariat is nothing new. Who will fill this role left empty by the proletariat? Sicariello Mar seems to doubt the very logic of a universal subject, much less one founded on class, and so he turns to the third author dealt with in his study, the Argentine philosopher Dussel, whose, quote, decolonial appeal to excluded exteriorities, end quote, represents one of decolonizing dialectic's main points of departure. Dussel's category of exteriority functions as a sort of catch-all or generic grab bag of oppressed identities, covering, quote, all those groups that are systematically excluded economically, politically, according to gender, etc., from the various systems comprising that totality to the global, quote, cultural exteriority, end quote, of colonized and formerly colonized spaces where collective practices either predate or coexist with those which make up the world system, end quote. Looking to the fringes of global capitalism, to the periphery away from the core, Sicariello Mar discovers, quote, multifaceted subjects, individuals to varying degrees outside the system, end quote. It, quote, exteriority is expressed by a multiplicity of subject positions, end quote. All this talk of world system and the alteration of core and periphery immediately calls to mind economists like André Gunderfrank, and indeed, C. Cariello Mar seeks to betress his argument in, quote, dependency theory, end quote, a la monthly review. Frank, credited by Dussel with the solution to this question, would later abandon the mal-inflected Marxism of his youth in favor of a more decentered model that regarded even Marx as, quote, Eurocentric, end quote. <laughs> to claim there is still space outside capitalist society considered as a totality implies that its expansionary logic is incomplete. Perhaps no one would have been surprised if this were so a hundred years ago, 
when capitalism had yet to make inroads into every territory across the earth. But in today's fully globalized world, the notion that anywhere remains untouched by capitalism's growth seems unlikely. Nevertheless, C. Cariello Mar feels that decolonizing dialectics requires, quote, a fundamental break with the paradigm of totality, end quote. He is concerned to get away from, quote, the prevailing totality-bound Hegelian Marxist tradition, end quote. Or, as he puts it elsewhere, quote, we cannot decolonize dialectics solely by prying open the cracks of imminent critique, end quote. As this requires, quote, stepping beyond the geographical and methodological boundaries of traditional dialectics, end quote. Sicariello Mar even scolds Bruce Baum, an author sympathetic to deep colonial critique, for attempting to, quote, decolonize, end quote, critical theory, quote, excuse me, only, quote, from within, end quote, rather than, quote, from without, end quote. In his view, this results in, quote, a very limited and almost wholly imminent critique of the Frankfurt School, end quote, an approach which he, which he deems sufficient, excuse me, insufficient, excuse me, quote, epistemic decolonization, end quote, he remarks, introducing another infelicitous phrase, involves finding, quote, the outside from which to decolonize European thought, end quote. Rather than, quote, the dialectics of Eurocentric communism, end quote, which search for, quote, faint refractions of borrowed anti-colonial light, end quote, Sicariello Mar counsels his readers to, quote, quote, go straight to the incandescent luster of the source, end quote, by which he means, quote, struggles emerging from the global periphery, end quote, as opposed to the path taken by Brennan in Borrowed Light, for example. Likewise, Sicariello Mar finds contemporary efforts to resuscitate universal history to be misguided that a European philosopher like Hegel drew inspiration from events outside of Europe like the Haitian Revolution is apparently of little consequence. Buck Morse's Hegel-Hadian universal history is furthermore taken to task for its, quote, privileging the Enlightenment ideal of liberty, end quote, which for some own unknown reason, quote, betrays a troubling, an excuse me, quote, betrays a troubling Eurocentrism, end quote. Buck Morse's celebration of Toussaint Louverture's abstract universalism for its lofty cosmopolitanist for its lofty cosmopolitan rhetoric is also evidence of her incorrigibly Eurocentric habits of thought. Sicariello Mar prefers a less remembered figure, Jean Jacques Desalines, who in his mind represented quote, the dialectics of black and national identity, end quote. One begins to get a sense of just what kind of out, quote, outside, end quote, he envisions as a decolonial springboard, as, quote, the identitarian movement becomes an essential step toward the universal, end quote. Subjectivity and identity are treated as more or less synonymous with Sicariello Mar, a significant slip given the heavy historico-philosophical overtones of the former. Moreover, he grants, quote, equivalence and coevalness, end quote, to every form of political identity, in a nod, quote, to equiprimordiality, equiprimordiality, end quote. Heidegger's Gleichersprunglichkeit, just as he rejects, quote, the all-too-frequent contempt for identity politics, end quote. Ultimately, Sicariello Mar follows Dussel through to this postulate of the, quote, people, or pueblo, as a decolonial alternative to the old-fashioned Marxian proletariat. Quote, by breaking with a purely internal relation of oppression, Dussel's Pueblo breaks with a narrowly Marxist focus on economic exploitation and the working class as a revolutionary subject 
providing a new conceptual framework to accommodate colonial economic conditions, end quote. However, Pueblo is more a meta-subject than a subject in the traditional sense. Quote, the people functions as an identity of identities, drawing together various sub-identities, each with their own particular sub-dialectics, into a broader horizon and antagonistic frontier, end quote, writes Sicariello Mar. Popular identity in Latin America thus becomes a, quote, category of rupture, end quote. One which, quote, tears down the walls of totality and opens a space through which exteriority burst into history, end quote. While Sicariello Mar takes this category over from Dussel, whose treatise on the subject he translated, it syncs well with his own long-standing support for the Bolivarian Revolution, Bolivarian Revolution in Venezuela. In a peon to the 1989 Caracazo rebellion, for example, he lyrically recounted that, quote, this expanding and combative people came into existence the second they shook the frontiers of being, shattered the mythical facade of Venezuelan harmony by rushing forward relentlessly with little attention paid to the sometimes dangerous shards that remained, end quote. Venezuelan chavismo, Sicariello Mar contends, preserves these multifarious elements as, quote, a subdialectic or dialectic within a dialectic, end quote. A corollary of the philosophical shift from dialectic to difference is a shift from negation to affirmation. One second. Goldner aptly comments that, quote, what was ending, bracket, with the rise of theories based on, quote, difference, end quote, end bracket, was the world historical career of, quote, negation, end quote, theorized for modern times by Hegel, end quote. In agreement with Dussel, then, Sicariello Mar argues that, quote, negative dialectic is no longer enough, end quote. Revolution today requires the, quote, affirmation of exteriority, end quote, or rather, quote, an appeal which is more than a merely internal and negative critique of the totality, more than a simply dialectical rupture, end quote. Once again, this is due to, quote, both the colonial tendency of ontology and its violent hostility to alterity, end quote. Fittingly, Sicariello Mar ends his book on a, quote, positive, end quote, note, with a section entitled, quote, Labor of the Positive, end quote, a determinant of Hegel, quote, the self-activity of decolonial subjects evades a purely negative dialectics, end quote. He declares, quote, with tradition providing a positive wellspring for dialectical motion, end quote. Hence, Sicariello Mars' call for a, quote, recrafted dialectics of tradition, exteriority and distance, end quote. Nationalism can even at times be put to positive use as a traditional source of decolonizing sentiments. And anyone who says otherwise is guilty of Eurocentrism. Quote, Black and decolonial nationalisms are thereby collapsed into the same bracket old nationalisms, end bracket, thus spoke Europe, end quote. Populism, traditionalism, nationalism are each, quote, weapons whose meaning appears to change depending on who wields them, end quote. Still, there is another difficulty lurking behind this positivist twist. After all, Dussel's whole, quote, turn toward the other, the outside and the beyond, end quote, in his philosophy of liberation, is part of what he calls, quote, analectics, end quote. Or, as he explains it, quote, analectic refers to the real human fact by which every person or people or group is situated, quote, beyond, end quote, anno, the horizon of totality, end quote. 
Sicariello Mar tries to soften Dussel's antipathy to dialectics, arguing that his, quote, analectics, end quote, are not so diametrically opposed. From the start, decolonizing dialectics maintains, quote, Dussel's break with dialectics is far from complete, and his incorporation of the category of exteriority into national and popular identity proves an essential ingredient for decolonized dialectics, end quote. What results is instead, quote, a formulated and decolonized dialectics in which the analectical appeal, bracket, Interpellation, interpellation to the other figures not as a, quote, method, end quote, per se, i.e., a replacement for dialectics, but as, quote, a moment, end quote, in a broader dialectical progression, end quote. This, quote, anadialectical, or, quote, affirmationist, reformulation of the dialectic might not be unwarranted in light of the last writings Dussel has published. Quote, Positivity is understood as the origin of negativity, defined as, quote, analectics, end quote, a dialectic that is initially positive. Ironically, the first Frankfurt School discovered Hegel's critical negativity, negative dialectic, but not positivity, analectics, and for that reason, in the end, either succumb to tragic messianism, Horkheimer or Adorno, to a creative imagination without radical alterity, Marcuse. Sicariello Meyer is admirably forthright in his renunciation of major tenets of dialectical thought. Totality, imminence, many-sidedness, reciprocity. One wonders if anything is left of dialectics apart from the name, since as Marx once said of Proudhon, dial decolon decolonizing dialectics, quote, has nothing of Hegel's dialectics but the language, end quote, and often not even that. Dialectical methodology, where it remains intact, has been thoroughly, quote, sophisticated, end quote, with warrantless additions. The tempered steel of German logic, as Trotsky called it, has been alloyed with metals of vastly inferior quality, usually of French origin. Now that the primary arguments of decolonizing dialectics have been dealt with, though certain comparisons can be made, and even beyond this, Sicariello Mars, readings of works by various authors, especially the writings of the Peruvian socialist, who... Jose Carlos Mariategui, The Black Jacobins by the Trinidadian Marxist C.L.R. James, and Fanon's masterpiece Black Skin, White Masks, may be evaluated to see whether their spirit is faithfully communicated. Finally, the, quote, motley band of theoretical heretics, end quote, as he refers to Sorel, Fanon, and Dussel, might be interrogated further. Some of the works Sicariello Mar invokes are far more promising than the highly selective use to which he puts them. Before delving into Sicariello Mar's mistakes, however, it is fair to pose a question he raises at the outset of decolonizing dialectics, but never adequately answers. Why dialectics? How does Sicariello Mar determine this method is necessary? As composed excuse me, as opposed to any other. Indeed, given his commitment to sustain a, quote, space for contingency, end quote, it is uncertain whether he would ever try to derive the necessity of his method. All three reasons he gives for taking a dialectical approach are arbitrary. One, he does not want to cede dialectics to conservatives. Two, he does not want to succumb to theories of diffuse, quote, multiplicity, end quote. And three, he is influenced by various, quote, decolonial organic intellectuals, end quote, who adopted this framework. Later, Sicariello Mar explains in a note that while he takes Christina Beltran's, 
The Trouble with Unity, published in 2010 seriously, his own approach, quote, will tread closer to a radicalized dialectics than the rhizomatics associated with Gilles Deleuze, end quote. Yet this seems more a matter of preference than a matter of substance. Either option would be just as valid. In other words, but dialectics are more to his taste. Sicariello Mars subscribes to what might be called the, quote, Buffett, end quote, model of picking and choosing theories. So, oh, excuse me. It's not Buffett. Buffet. Sicariello Mars subscribes to what might be called the, quote, Buffet, end quote, model of picking and choosing theories, a smattering of this and a smattering of that, instead of adopting one approach and applying it rigorously, much less letting the object dictate. Method should not be sought, thought separately from the content of what is under review. If the dialectic is to be more than a subjective addition, an arbitrary, quote, way of thinking, end quote, about the world, its logic has to be discovered in the object itself, in this case, society. Quote, dialectical understanding is nothing other than the conceptual form of a real dialectical fact, end quote. I don't know who that quote is from, but, uh, uh, Georg Lukács, or Lukács. For a dialectical account of society to be warranted, then, a dynamic tension thus has to operate throughout the social whole and govern its totality. The Frankfurt School sociologist Theodor Adorno went so far as to contend in a lecture series of 1968 that, quote, the concept of, quote, society, end quote, is and must be inherently dialectical, end quote. Society, continued to explain, signifies, quote, bracket A, end bracket, mediated and mediating relationship between the individuals, and not as a mere agglomerate of individuals. It is thus dialectical in the sense, in the, excuse me, it is thus dialectical in the strict sense, because the mediation between these two opposed categories, individuals on the one side and society on the other, is implicit in both, end quote. Even further, as the great Hegelian Marxist Antonio Labriola had pointed out seven decades prior, quote, the real criticism of society is society itself, which by the antithetic conditions upon which society rests engenders from itself, within itself, the contradiction over which it finally triumphs by passing into a new form. But the solution of existing antitheses is the proletariat, whether proletarians themselves know this or not, even as their misery has become the condition of present society, so in their misery resides the justification of the new proletarian revolution. It is in this passage from the criticism of subjective thought, which examines things from the outside and imagines it can correct them all at once, to an understanding of the self-criticism exercised by society over itself, in the imminence of its own processus, I don't know if that's supposed to be processes or if processus is a word, that the dialectic of history consists, which Marx and Engels, insofar as they remained materialists, drew from the idealism of Hegel, end quote, Antonio Labriola. One second, sorry. Labriola thereby introduced a conditio sin qua non of dialectical thought. Quote, the imminence of its own process, end quote. Hegel wants to find dialectics as, quote, the imminent process of transcendence. Dis imminente... Excuse me. Dis imminenta hin aus 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 gayen. Sorry, burped there while I was saying a word that I can't pronounce. Double 
double failure, <laughs> end quote, of finite judgments issued by the intellect, a definition later barred by Lukács. According to Hegel, thinking is nothing other than, quote, the resolution of contradictions from its own resources, Auszik, end quote. Placed back on its feet, of course, dialectic must seek appropriate means to resolve its contradictions. Quote, the weapon of criticism cannot replace the criticism by weapons, end quote, wrote Marx in 1843. Quote, material force must be overthrown by material force, but theory becomes a material force as soon as it has gripped the masses, end quote. Socio-historic imminence is embodied by the proletariat, however, and so, quote, philosophy finds its material weapons in the proletariat, end quote. Obviously, anyone who finds the imminent critique of capitalism too limited will not be persuaded by the idea that the proletariat alone can overcome its contradictions. Sicariello Mar, for example, argues that, quote, Sorel can even be understood as a forerunner of those for whom the 20th century would mark the, quote, real subsumption, end quote, in Marx's terms of the working class under the capitalist state via mediating organs such as political parties or trade unions, end quote. Proletarians have been more or less successfully integrated into capitalism, in other words, their revolutionary potential nullified. This is a fairly standard conflation on the part of Sicariello Mar, however. Sorel's theories do not in any meaningful sense prefigure those of Hart and Negri or the End Notes Collective who are listed as latter-day adherents of this belief, excuse me, to this belief. Real subsumption corresponds to the dominance of what Marx called the production of relative surplus value, whereas formal subsumption corresponds to the dominance of production of absolute surplus value. However, Sorel was not just skeptical of the concept of surplus value, but rejected the theory of value as such, so there was no basis for comparing Sorel to a group like Théorie Communiste. Both reached the verdict that the working class can no longer be counted on as an agent of historic change, whereas the latter does so on the strength of an argument about the real subsumption of labor under capital. However, the former does not. Nor should this be thought immaterial in a treatise on dialectics, either. Whereas Hegel pointed out long ago, what matters for science is not just the result, quote, but rather the result along with the process by which the result came about, end quote. For the truth of a conclusion ought not to be thought incidental to the method used to arrive at it. Nothing is learned from what is only fortuitously correct. Labriola, whose writing Sorel briefly championed in France during the 1890s, mercilessly mocked the Frenchman's, quote, premature lubrications on the theory of value, end quote. Dussel, another of Sicariello Mars' to decolonial avatars, excuse me, avatars, also runs into roadblocks when it comes to Marx's value theory. This despite having dedicated an entire book to the exegesis of the 1861-63 to economic manuscripts. And if you don't know, those were the manuscripts that uh, culminated in the, uh, uh, what we would call today, uh, the theory of surplus value volumes, or theories of surplus value. His problems begin once he tries to translate the Marxian critique of political economy into a Lebinasian idiom, which is ill-equipped to handle its dialectical flux of categories, let alone convert these into language about, quote, otherness or, quote, exteriority. Oddly, Dussel locates the primordial node of exteriority to capitalism well within its borders. In the living labor employed by production, Sicariello Mar tucks away mention of this fact in an antidote, excuse me, in an end note. <laughs> As it does not really fit with the overall thrust of decolonizing dialectics argument. Unusually, Dussel's close reading of the 1861 to 63 drafts for capital leads him to claim that, quote, Marx's category par excellence is not, quote, totality, end quote, but, quote, exteriority, end quote, end quote. 
formulated differently, the other of capital is labor. So Dussel can maintain that, quote, the, quote, exteriority, end quote, of living labor vis-a-vis -vis the, quote, totality, end quote, of capital is the precondition of Marx's discourse, end quote. Patrick Murray, an excellent interpreter of Marx, shows that Dussel's mistake is to focus on transhistorical forms like living labor instead of the more historically specific form of wage labor, which becomes generalized only with capitalism. As a consequence, he falls prey to moralizing platitudes reminiscent of Proudhon. Surplus value acquired through production is the er form of, quote, unequal exchange, end quote as workers are robbed of overtime. One second. Moreover, while Sicar Yellow Mar is at great pains to distinguish Dussel's concept of the Pueblo from Ernesto Lacklow's, quote, populist reason, end quote, a decidedly less, quote, popular, end quote, category among contemporary theory types, these efforts are undercut by the very man he seeks to defend. Dussel told an interviewer in 2001 that he, quote, agreed with Lacklow since day one, end quote, insofar as he understood the latter to be, quote, deconstructing class-based dogmas, end quote. Quote, what I proposed already in the 70s, end quote, Dussel continued, quote, was the category of, quote, the people, end quote, pueblo, which is not opposed to the concept of, quote, class, end quote, but contains the former category. Class cannot completely take into account people, which is what Lacklau and I are saying, end quote. Venezuela is Sicariello Mar's preferred proving ground for this notion of the Pueblo. And while he waxes poetic about the, quote, combative, combative dialectics and multiple sub-dialectics swirling around and coalescing in Venezuela's, quote, Bolivarian revolution, end quote, end quote. Petrol populism is a poor stand-in for the proletariat of old. Sergio Lopez of Cosmo Prolet, already noted in 2009, at the pinnacle of Chavismo, the popularity of slogans like, quote, Chavez is the people, and President Chavez is a tool of God, end quote. Lopez saw that this, quote, charitable kleptocracy, end quote, was rapidly steering the country towards its next social crisis, as indeed it has since the price of its oil mono commodity bottomed out in 2013. Quote, postmodern Bonapartism, end quote, as Marco Torres dubs, quote, 21st century socialism, end quote, is a, quote, bricolage of 30s vintage pop frontism together with 90s anti-globalization molded upon 60s developmentalist third worldism, end quote. That sounds fucking right to me. Even more fraught than the question of societal imminence is the question of, quote, totality, end quote, in the emphatic sense. Though he anchors decolonizing dialectics conceptually in Martin Jay's 1983 Marxism and Totality, a fairly comprehensive view of the relationship, Sicariello Mar owes more to Dussel's Lebinasian transcendence of totality along with John Stanley's elaboration of the Sorelian diremption of totality. Leaving aside the issue of whether such a totality does today or should someday exist, however, the difference between the descriptive and normative totality in Jay's sense, one can perhaps conceive totality as a critical category. Jameson stresses that, quote, totality is not something one ends with, but rather one begins with, end quote, and goes on to explain, quote, 
It is capitalism as a now global system that is the totality or unifying force, such that one can even say the dialectic itself does not become historically visible ent until capitalism's emergence, end quote. Brennan is more adamant still, quote, modernity, if it is singular, is not, is so, not because of any unilateral declaration or because theorists of a certain persuasion find totality attractive or find comfort in simple-minded formulae about the universal. Rather, it is singular because the overdeveloped and interlocking global systems of capital always act as the prime motives of colonialism and imperialism, end quote. While Sicariello Mar is obliged to address this nuance in his dissertation, he is reluctant to say whether he accepts the existence of totality as a tentative fact. Each of the thinkers discussed in decolonizing dialectics, he admits, quote, breaks with descriptive notions of totality as part as a point of departure, end quote. Perhaps the definitive critique of such deconstructive gestures which seek to affirm agency by denying structure has been articulated by Moish Pistone. Bracket, some are, and bracket, excuse me, quote, bracket, some are, and bracket, critical of both homogeneity and totalization. However, then deny, rather than denying their real existence, bracket, the Marxian, and bracket, critique, grounds processes of excuse me homogenization and totalization in historically specific forms of social relations and shows how structural tensions internal to those relations open up the historical possibility of abolishing those processes the problem with many recent approaches that affirm heterogeneity is that they seek to inscribe it quasi metaphysically by denying the existence of what can only be historically abolished in this way, positions intended to empower people often prove to be profoundly disempowering, insofar as they bracket and render invisible central dimensions of domination in the modern world of capitalism, end quote. Moish Bastone. Marx's ruthless criticism of modern society proceeds from the historical possibilities opened up by that society. The standpoint of the proletariat invoked by Lukács following Marx and Engels, is not some sort of Archimedean point outside the capitalist mode of production, but rather a point inside this process from which the social totality can be glimpsed. Quote, only from the standpoint of the proletariat can social contradictions be grasped as dialectical and made conscious, end quote. Declared Lukács in 1925. Quote, the one class that is in a position to understand the total development of capitalist society as a process, end quote. As Marx proclaimed in the 1871 postface to Capital, quote, in its rational form, the dialectic includes in its positive understanding of what exists a simultaneous recognition of what exists negation, of its inevitable destruction, because it regards every historically developed form as in a fluid state, in motion. It therefore grasps its transient aspect, and because it does not let itself be impressed by anything, being in its very essence critical and revolutionary, end quote. Vladimir Lenin similarly emphasized 50 years later that capitalism would only ever be overcome by, quote, a long and persistent struggle, on the basis of capitalism itself, end quote. Communism will be inside out or not at all. Postscript. It ought to be mentioned that many thinkers posthumously enlisted to the decolonial cause would hardly recognize themselves in it. Fanon might, though he would likely be horrified by anti-humanist readings of his work, as Peter Hudis notes. <laughs> 
James and Mariatigi, by contrast, almost certainly would not. While someone like Gros Fuguel takes pride in the fact that he draws upon indigenous resources and hence does not rely on master thinkers from the Occident, it is unlikely anyone not steeped in that tradition would be able to follow decolonial theory. Mignolo brings up the necessity of acts he refers to as, quote, epistemic disobedience, end quote. Quote, decolonial thought presupposes, quote, delinking, end quote, both epistemically and politically from the web of imperial knowledge, end quote. As Goldner explains, quote, delinking is a fancy name for an idea first developed by Stalin called, quote, socialism in one country, end quote, end quote. First used in Samir Amin's 1988 book Eurocentrism, Eurocentrism. Gross Fuguel even calls for the, quote, decolonization of post-colonial studies, end quote, a field he thinks is still too reliant on the authority of Western thinkers in an article on the, quote, epistemic decolonial turn, end quote. Mignolo delineates colonial, decolonial from post-colonial theory in a similar fashion, claiming that, quote, the, quote, decolonial, end quote, shift is a project of, quote, delinking, end quote, whereas post-colonial theory is a project of scholarly transformation within the academy, end quote. Yet the palpable irony here is that even if Gros Foguel gets rid of the names Foucault, Darida, Gramsci, while retaining only Guha, or if Mignoli jettisons Foucault, Lacan, and Darida, but holds on to Baba, they would still be working within the tradition they just disavowed, because Gua is unthinkable without Gramsci, and Baba is unthinkable without Derrida. Nevertheless, this has nothing to do with the intrinsic, quote, greatness, or unique, quote, genius of European civilization, or other such chauvinist nonsense. Rather, it has everything to do with an historic form of universality that happened to develop in Europe and expanded outward from there. Decolonial theories tend to be dissatisfied with this version of events, however. Toward the end of decolonizing dialectics, Sicariello Mar insists that insists the method he sets forth is an ends causa sui, quote, lest the underlying chronological architectonics of this book be seen as reinscribing the very same linear, deterministic, and progressive teleology that the thinkers in it contest, end quote. C. Cariello Mar writes, quote, the, decolonial, the decolonized dialectics of Franz Fanon and Enrique Dussel exist independently of George Sorel's radicalized dialectics of class struggle, he is not their origin source or mandatory, mandatory point of departure. While capitalism and coloniality emerged so jointly as to be nearly synonymous, decolonization itself is not an outgrowth of, nor does it find its parent, quote, parentage in the class struggle, end quote. Still, the secondary figures Sicariello Mar deals with in decolonizing dialectics does not suffer the same anxiety of influence he imputes to them. Mariatigi, for example, noted the universalizing quality of capitalism as it arose in Europe. Quote, internationalism is not a brand new current, end quote, he recorded in 1924. Quote, for roughly a century or so now, in European civilization, one sees the tendency to develop an international organization of humanity, end quote. Mariatigi. Anti-imperialism was not a particularly promising orientation for Mariatigi, seeing as it, quote, does not constitute and cannot constitute by itself a political program, a mass movement capable of conquering power, end quote. 
Revolt in the periphery was meaningful only in conjunction with revolution in the core of capitalism. He felt, so he affirmed, quote, We are anti-imperialists because we are Marxists, because we are revolutionaries who oppose socialism to capitalism as an adversarial system called upon to succeed it, end quote. By struggling against foreign imperialism, they were merely fulfilling, quote, their duties of solidarity with the revolutionary masses of Europe, end quote. Here he was more in line with Lenin and the early common turn than the national liberation fronts of the second half of the 20th century, since the former had written that, quote, the dialectics of history are such that small nations, powerless as an independent factor in the struggle against imperialism, play a part as one of the ferments, one of the bacilli, which help the real anti-imperialist force, the socialist proletariat, to make its appearance on the world scene, end quote. Little wonder, then, that the great Peruvian Leninist would declare, quote, the fate of all the workers of the world is in play in the European crisis, which ought to be of equal interest to workers of Peru and of the Far East. This crisis has Europe as its principal theater, but the crisis of European institutions is at the same time the crisis of institutions of Western civilization. And Peru, like other countries of Amer the Americas, revolves inside the orbit of this civilization, not only because politically independent countries are being dealt with, but also because they are still economically colonized through their links to British, American, and French capitalism, because both our culture and types of institutions are European. Right now, these democratic institutions, this culture we copied from Europe, come from a place which is in total crisis. Capitalist civilization has historically internationalized the life of humanity. It has created the material connections among peoples that establish an inevitable solidarity among them. Internationalism is not an idea, but a reality. Progress makes interest, ideas, customs, and regimes unify and merge. So Peru, like other countries in the Americas, is not then outside the crisis, but inside the crisis. The global crisis has already had repercussions on these countries and will, of course, continue to do so. A period of conservative reaction in Europe will likewise be a period of reaction in the Americas, just as a period of revolution in Europe will likewise be a period of revolution in the Americas. More than a century ago, when the life of humanity was not as linked as it is today, when today's communication media did not exist, when the nations did not have the immediate constant contact they have today, when there was no press, back when we were still distant spectators of European events, even then, French the French Revolution provided the origin of our war of independence and creation of all these republics. Just remembering this is enough for us to realize the rapidity with which the transformation of society is reflected in Latin America. Those who say Peru, or the Americas in general, is far from the European Revolution, have no idea of contemporary life, nor do they have even an approximate understanding of history, end quote. That's from uh, Mariategui. Mariategui was evidently unconcerned with the provenance of ideas, whether they could be traced to native sources or were imported from Europe. Quote, socialism is certainly not an Indo-American doctrine, end quote, he admitted in September 1928. Quote, no such doctrine, no contemporary system is or could be. Although socialism, like capitalism, may have been born in Europe, it is not specifically or particularly European. Capitalism, excuse me, socialism is a worldwide movement. Western civilization drives towards universality with forces and means that no previous civilization has possessed. One hundred years ago, we owed our independence as nations completely to the rhythm of Western history, whose compass was inexorably moved 
excuse me, has inexorably moved us since colonization. Quote, democracy, quote, liberty, quote, sovereignty of the people. All the great words men of that time pronounced came from the European repertoire. History does not measure the greatness of such men for the originality of their ideas. However, but for the efficacy and the genius with which they serve them, end quote. The Brazilian Marxist Michael Luvi has demonstrated, moreover, that the Sorel in Mariátegui's writings was, quote, invented to suit his needs. James likewise remained a Marxist throughout his life, though in his elder years he came to soften his stance on black nationalism, national liberation struggles, and Maoism. In 1937, in particular, he reaffirmed that the emancipation of labor is neither a local nor a national but a social problem, depending for its solution on the practical and theoretical concurrence of the most advanced countries. Universality was clearly at the forefront of James's mind in his notes on dialectics as he dedicated five consecutive pages to the proposition Quote, socialism is a universal, end quote. Lecturing on W.E.B. Du Bois' Black Reconstruction, published in 1935, and his own book on the Black Jacobins, published in 1938 in 1971, James took exception to the pigeonholing of Du Bois as a mere, quote, black historian, end quote. Quote, people today take Du Bois and say that, in black reconstruction and the souls of black folk, he was a man concerned primarily with blackness. They limit him to what they are concerned with. They are quite wrong, end quote. Du Bois certainly at times was a nationalist, but in his best moments he produced lines of unparalleled universalism, writing that, quote, there should be no distinction of race or nationality, but only separation into two great classes, laborers and those who live by others' labor, end quote. But the most dramatic contrast that can be offered between the perspective of a Marxist such as James and the perspective of a, quote, decolonial, end quote, theorist such as C. Cariello Mar has to do with their respective interpretations of the massacre of white subsistence farmers in Haiti in 1804. Quote, when the whites were massacred during the Haitian Revolution, end quote, Sicariello Mar expressed recently, quote, that was a good thing indeed, end quote. Here is what James had to say about it. Quote, the masses, excuse me, the massacre of the whites was a tragedy not for the whites. For the old slave owners, the owners who burnt a little powder in the ass of a negro, or buried him alive for insects to eat, those who were well treated by Toussaint, and who, as soon as they got the chance, began their old cruelties again. For them, there is no need to waste a tear or a single drop of ink. The tragedy was for the blacks and the mulattoes. It was not policy but revenge, and revenge has no place in politics." The remaining whites were no longer to be feared, and such purposeless massacres degrade and brutalize a population, especially one which was just starting out as a nation and had so bitter a past. People did not want it. All they wanted was their freedom and independence seemed to promise just that. Christoph and the rest, and rest of the general strongly disapproved. Had the British or the Americans thrown their weight on the side of humanity, Dessalines might have been curbed. But as it was, Haiti suffered terribly from the resulting isolation. Whites were banished from Haiti for generations, and the unfortunate country was ruined economically, its population lacking in social culture. Haiti's inevitable difficulties were doubled by this massacre. That the new nation survived it all is forever to its credit, for if the Haitians thought imperialism was finished with them, they were mistaken, end quote. I said that kind of weird, finished with them, they were mistaken, end quote. Sicariel Omar is no doubt aware of this passage. He even quotes a snippet from it in his review of Buck Morse's Hegel, Haiti, and Universal History, 
but is careful to leave out the parts that might contradict his celebratory narrative. Even Fanon, the one who wrote Wretched of the Earth, was far more ambivalent about the effects and effectiveness of violence than his Sicariello Mar. Pastone has diagnosed such empty militant posturing as a symptom of historical helplessness, which has been the more deeply felt since the decline of the workers' movement after the 60s. Quote, Violence became seen as non-reified, as a non-reified cleansing force erupting from the outside, identified now as the colonized, which took aim at the very foundations of the social order, end quote, indicates Pistone. Quote, retrospectively, we can see that the sort of existential violence promulgated, bracket, by Sorel, Pareto, or Fanon, end bracket, may have affected a break with bourgeois society, but not, however, with capitalism, end quote. As mentioned above, Sicariello Mar instead decided, decides to lavish praise upon Dessalines, the general who told Toussaint not, excuse me, who sold Toussaint out to Leclerc, before doing the same to his rivals, Charles and Sanité Belair, Dessalines, it's probably Dessalines, I'm not an expert on uh, Haitian history, so forgive me if I'm pronouncing this wrong. Dessalines crowned himself emperor in 1804 and ruled with an iron fist over the ex-colonial island until his assassination two years later. If James likened Toussaint to Robespierre, Dessalines could be likened to Napoleon. This would still be in keeping with James' political analogy, since Napoleon had once been a Jacobin. Marx had no patience for self-styled New World Napoleons like Simon Bolivar, so it is not hard to imagine that he might have thought, excuse me, what he might have thought of Dessalines. Quote, to see the most dastardly, most miserable, and meanest of scoundrels, bracket, lump, end bracket, described as Napoleon, was altogether too much. Bolivar is a veritable soluque, S-O-U-L-O-U-Q-E-E, -E. Q-U-E, sorry, end quote. What little success Dessalines enjoyed during his short-lived reign was thanks to the, quote, economic exploitation of the black labor force, end quote, as Mark Rolf Truillot pointed out in Haiti, state against nation. Of course, it is unsurprising that a supporter of Bolivarianism, like Sicariello Mar, would go in for populist strongmen like Bolivar or Dessalines. Chavez was not wrong to claim the former an antecedent. Finishing here with Fanon, regrettably, as Sunit Singh points out, Wretched of the Earth is far better remembered than its predecessor, Black Skin, White Masks, largely because of the former's historic importance to the new left. Sicariello Mar sees Fanon's career as of a piece, and so the two works are viewed as compatible. Quote, those who would divide Fanon's oeuvre from <laughs> distinguishing Black Skin, excuse me, those who would divide Fanon's ouvre from distinguishing black skin white masks from wretched of the earth often do so by neglecting his decolonized dialectical vision, end quote. Later, however, he concedes that, quote, Fanon's relation to the universal had changed between 1952 and 1961, end quote. Wretched of the Earth has some great moments, to be sure, setting aside its flawed class analysis and nationalist poetics, but Black Skin White Masks is great from cover to cover. Near the end of it, Fanon brushed aside the need for so-called, quote, epistemic decolonization, end quote, more than 50 years avant la lettre. Let it be said, quote, as a man... I must rework the world's past from the very beginning. I am not just a, I am not just responsible for the slave revolt in Saint-Domingue. Every time a man has brought 
victory to the dignity of the spirit. Every time a man has said no to attempt to enslave his fellow man, I have felt a sense of solidarity with the with his act. In no way does my vocation have to be drawn from the past of peoples of color. Must I ask today's white men to answer for the slave traders of the 17th century? Should I try by every means available to cause guilt Excuse me, cause guilt to burgeon in their souls? Have I nothing better to do than avenge the blacks of that age? I have no rights as a man of color, excuse me, have no right as a man of color to wish for a guilt complex to crystallize in white men regarding the past of my race. I have no right to become mired in the determinations of the past. There is no black mission. There is no white burden. I am not a slave to the slavery that dehumanized my ancestors. For many black intellectuals, European civilization possesses a characteristic of exteriority. Furthermore, in human relationships, the Western world can feel foreign to a black man. Not wanting to be thought a poor relation, an adopted son or a bastard child, must he feverishly try to discover a black civilization? Let there be no misunderstanding. We are convinced it would be of enormous interest to discover a black literature or architecture from the 3rd century before Christ, be and would be overjoyed to learn of the existence of correspondence between some black philosopher and Plato. But we can absolutely not see how this fact would change the lives of eight-year-olds working in the cane fields of Martinique or Guadalupe. There should be no attempt to fixate man, since it is his destiny which is to be unleashed. The destiny of history determines none of my acts. I am my own foundation. For it is by going beyond the historical given that I initiate my cycle of freedom. The misfortune of men of color is to have been enslaved. The misfortune and inhumanity of white men are having killed men, excuse me, are having killed man elsewhere. Still today they organize this dehumanization rationally. But insofar as I can exist absolutely, I have no right to confine myself to a world of retroactive reparations, end quote. Franz Fanon. Elsewhere in his 1956 address on racism and culture, Fanon again confirmed, quote, Racism is not a constant of the human spirit, but a disposition that fits into a well-defined system, end quote. The task confronting revolutionaries today is to overthrow that system. If, on the one hand, it is necessary to recognize the, quote, colorblind, excuse me, that, quote, the, quote, colorblind, end quote, Marxism of many left communist currents, a proletarian is a proletarian is a proletarian, is simply a blind Marxism, end quote, as Goldner rightly contends then neither should it be admissible to endlessly prevaricate about some bizarre, quote, racial allocation of guilt, end quote. As if Fanon did not raise this as a postulate to be refuted within the pages of the same book. Decolonial theory does not advance the cause of emancipation, much less does it shine the path forward for some renovated dialectic. Unless, of course, this path is visualized as a dead end, or perhaps an ideological cul-de-sac. Quite the opposite. It attests to a regression that has taken place across the political spectrum, but which is particularly acute on the left. Nowhere is this more evident than in the simultaneous academization of theory alongside the activist activification of practice. Still, Neither this postscript nor the text it succeeds would be, should be seen as an imminent critique of decolonial discourse, since, strictly speaking, this technique is reserved for objects worthy of redemption. Hence Marx's approach to French revolutionary socialism, British political economy, and German classical philosophy each had something in it that pointed beyond itself towards the transcendence of capital. 
some, excuse me, transcendence of capitalism, something worthy of being redeemed. This is not the case with decolonial theory. If there is any imminence here, it is because the thinkers conscripted by this theory, Marti Mariotegui, pre-1956 James, and Fanon between 1952 and 1956, deserve better, and should at least be spared the embarrassment of being associated with it. 